Dear viewers, welcome to our learning community. We share high-quality educational content and MCQ practice designed to help students in medicine, dentistry, nursing, physical therapy, and pharmacy master medical sciences with clear and strong understanding. Our goal is to support your preparation for international medical exams. We are fully committed to following YouTube community guidelines and international standards. Every video is carefully designed to strengthen your understanding, inspire your success, and make the journey of education both effective and enjoyable. Thank you for being part of our community together. We learn, grow, and create a brighter future. Welcome to today's Advanced Physiology Review Session. In this lecture, we will cover essential concepts in cell biology, homeostasis, renal and cardiovascular physiology, and hematology. We will examine how these systems interact to maintain the body's internal environment and respond to stress. Understanding these mechanisms is critical not only for exams, but also for clinical practice. Let's get started. Cell biology, the powerhouse of the cell. The organelle most commonly called the powerhouse of the cell is the mitochondria. Mitochondria generate energy in the form of ADP through oxidative phosphorylation, which drives numerous cellular processes, including muscle contraction, nerve signaling, active transport, and protein synthesis. Without mitochondria, cells cannot sustain their energy demands. Other organelles, the endoplasmic reticulum ER, comes in two forms. Rough ER, which synthesizes proteins destined for secretion or membranes, and smooth ER, which is involved in lipid synthesis, detoxification, and calcium storage. The Golgi apparatus modifies, sorts, and packages proteins and lipids, directing them to their final destinations. Lysosomes are cellular recycling centers that degrade macromolecules, damage organelles, and pathogens through enzymatic digestion. Cytoskeleton elements, such as microtubules and actin filaments, maintain cell shape, aid in intracellular transport, and facilitate cell division. Cellular transport and osmotic balance. The sodium-potassium pump, a critical active transport mechanism, pumps three sodium ions out of the cell and two potassium ions into the cell. This maintains the resting membrane potential and regulates cellular volume. When red blood cells are placed in a hypotonic solution, water moves into the cell, causing swelling and potentially lysis. Conversely, hypertonic solutions cause cells to shrink, a process called crenation. Understanding these principles is fundamental to fluid and electrolyte management in clinical medicine. Homeostasis and Hormonal Regulation Definition and Importance Homeostasis is a maintenance of a stable internal environment including temperature, pH, electrolyte concentration, and fluid balance. This dynamic equilibrium is essential for cellular function, enzymatic activity, and overall organismal survival. Fluid and electrolyte regulation. Antidiuretic hormone ADH acts on the collecting duct of the kidney, increasing water reabsorption during dehydration or hyperosmolar states. Aldosterone, secreted by the adrenal cortex, increases sodium reabsorption and potassium excretion in the distal tubule, helping maintain blood pressure and plasma volume. Atrial natriuretic peptide, ANP, released by atrial myocytes in response to atrial stretch, promotes sodium and water excretion and causes vasodilation, counteracting RAS activity. Calcium homeostasis. Hypocalcemia can lead to tendony, positive trostex and trousseau signs, and neuromuscular excitability. Hypercalcemia may cause fatigue, nausea, constipation, and cardiac arrhythmias. Parathyroid hormone, PTH, and vitamin D regulate calcium and phosphate balance by influencing intestinal absorption, renal reabsorption, and bone remodeling. Renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system, RES. RAS is activated by low blood pressure, decreased renal perfusion, or sympathetic stimulation. This system works sequentially. Renin release angiotensin I conversion to angiotensin II aldosterone secretion. Angiotensin II also causes vasoconstriction, helping restore blood pressure and maintain tissue perfusion. Hematology and Immunology Erythropoiesis Red blood cell production or erythropoiesis 
is stimulated by the kidney's release of erythropoietin in response to hypoxia. RBCs are crucial for oxygen transport via hemoglobin, ensuring tissues receive adequate oxygen for metabolism. White blood cells, WBCs. Neutrophils are the primary phagocytes, removing bacteria and cellular debris. Lymphocytes include B cells, responsible for antibody production, and T cells, mediating cell-mediated immunity. Eosinophils combat parasites, while basophils release histamine during allergic reactions. Monocytes differentiate into macrophages and tissues, clearing debris and presenting antigens to lymphocytes. Platelets and hemostasis. Platelets initiate the primary hemostatic plug during vascular injury. The coagulation cascade subsequently stabilizes the clot by converting fibrinogen into fibrin. Together, platelets and clotting factors prevent excessive bleeding and maintain vascular integrity. Cardiovascular regulation. Blood pressure regulation. Baroreceptors located in the carotid sinuses and aortic arch sense pressure changes and adjust heart rate and vascular tone via autonomic reflexes. Chemoreceptors detect changes in O2, CO2, and pH, modifying ventilation and cardiac output accordingly. Autonomic nervous system. Sympathetic stimulation increases heart rate, contractility, and vasoconstriction, raising cardiac output and blood pressure. Parasympathetic stimulation, primarily via the vagus nerve, decreases heart rate and conduction velocity, modulating cardiac output during rest. Hormonal influences. Epinephrine enhances heart rate and contractility via beta receptors and induces vasoconstriction in select vascular beds. ANP promotes sodium and water excretion, opposing the RAS and reducing blood pressure. Reflexes and compensation. When standing quickly, the baroreceptor reflex counteracts the initial drop in blood pressure by increasing sympathetic activity. Long-term renal angiotensin aldosterone system activation maintains fluid balance and blood pressure over hours to days, while chemoreceptor reflexes fine-tune cardiovascular and respiratory responses. Cardiac electrophysiology, P-wave, atrial depolarization, QRS complex, ventricular depolarization, T-wave, ventricular repolarization. Sympathetic stimulation increases both heart rate and contractility, enhancing cardiac output during stress, exercise, or hypotensive states. Renal physiology, juxtaglomerular apparatus. The JGA monitors blood pressure and sodium concentration in the distal tubule. Juxtaglomerular cells release renin in response to low perfusion, while the macula densa senses sodium levels and modulates renin secretion accordingly. Nephron function. Glomerulus, Bowman's capsule, filtration of plasma, forming primary urine. Proximal tubule, reabsorbs glucose, amino acids, and electrolytes. Loop of Henle, creates a countercurrent multiplier system, concentrating urine. Distal tubule and collecting duct, fine-tuned sodium, potassium, and water balance under hormonal control, ADH and aldosterone. Micturition reflex. Stretch receptors in the bladder wall trigger the micturition reflex, sending signals to the spinal cord and brainstem to coordinate urination via parasympathetic pathways. Integration of systems and clinical relevance. Fluid and electrolyte balance. RES, ADH, ANP, and renal mechanisms work together to maintain blood pressure, osmolarity, and volume. Oxygen transport. RBCs, erythropoietin, and hemoglobin ensure tissue oxygenation. Immune defense. WBCs, platelets, and the coagulation system protect against infection and blood loss. Cardiovascular homeostasis. Baroreceptors, autonomic nervous system, and hormones maintain adequate perfusion during postural changes, stress, or exercise. Renal clearance and excretion. Nephron filtration, reabsorption, and micturition maintain electrolyte balance and remove metabolic waste. That brings us to the end of today's lecture on cell biology, homeostasis, renal physiology, cardiovascular regulation, and hematology. These systems are intricately connected, ensuring the human body functions efficiently under normal and stress conditions. Mastery of these mechanisms is essential for clinical practice, exams, and understanding pathophysiology. 
Thank you for watching. If you found this lecture helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss future lessons. Keep learning, stay curious, and see you in the next session.